So there's a there's a promo of Nakamura on the screen, mm-hmm. and he's cutting a promo on Seth. And as he's cutting a promo, the actual Nakamura flies into the ring. He lays out Seth Rollins, and then somehow the pre-tape Nakamura knew that Seth was laid out and he needs to count. Mm-hmm. So he was yeah, he tried to count to ten so he, to prove that Nakamura can beat Seth. Dave. Yes. It's a pre-tape. I know, and we all the know it's pre-tape. The pre-tape starts counting. Yes. Seth gets up at seven, and the pre-tape knows he got up at seven and stops counting. Yes. No, it's magic. So then Seth we're lays su- him out again. We're not supposed to we're not supposed to know it's a pre-tape. It's like The guy's in the ring. I know. Maybe it's his brother, like Yoda Suji. He's got a twin brother? Yoda Suji does. Well, I mean, I think we would have heard about this by now. We didn't know about Yoda Suji until like I he, guess the, that's true. You know? Well, they better reveal that Nakamura's got a twin brother because he knocks him out again and the pre tape knows enough to start counting again. I know. And he starts counting. But Nakamura gets up and the pre tape stops counting. I'm like, oh my God, this is something else here. Oh, yeah. And so then finally, Seth lays him out, or uh, Nakamura lays him out again. At least this time, Nakamura counted the actual Nakamura. And, uh, and Seth was dead. And, like, first off, it was so stupid that you have a pre tape that knows when a guy is getting up and down. But second, this was supposed to make us interested for a last man standing match. Except and he didn't get up at the end. Seth beat him up in three minutes with chair shots. Nakamura and the guy could, Nakamura. And the guy couldn't get up at 10. I was like, I know. that's supposed to make me want to see this pay-per-view? You just hit a guy with these chairs and he can't get up? Well, I mean, the whole idea should be, like, like the last time I go like, okay, he's going to take this horrible beating and get up again. But he didn't. No. And it's like, it's like, okay, now how does this make sense? Not just that, like, but that's all it takes? That's, that's the whole the whole point is is that it's it's supposed to show you that he's always going to get up, but then he doesn't get up. So all it shows you is is that because it's a no DQ match, you can just hit him with chairs and the thing's going to be over. And there you go. We've already seen it. This was an astoundingly bad segment. This yeah. was right here. Yeah, but I did think that Nakamura with the subtitles until he showed up. I thought that was actually going pretty good. It was going pretty good when we could read the subtitles. Yeah. There was one full frame that they didn't even show us, because right when it just came on the screen to read, they cut to Seth. Yeah. I was like, what's this guy saying? But we didn't know. So then Becky meets with Tegan. She says, you know, when I'm 100%, we're going to go. So she leaves. And then Natty shows up. And Natty says, you know, we got off on the wrong foot. I have more respect for you after last week. I'm proud of you. You're going to get your shot against Becky and you're going to nail it. And Tegan says, thank you. And that was it. Nettie walked off. That was so it. apparently they're now friends. At least at least until she turns on her. Well, yeah, Isn't but that? you know what she should do is they should just win the tag team titles. because. Uh, well, you could do that. They could, they could do that. That would be better than what we got. Yeah. It would be much better, yes. Yeah. So it's Chelsea and Tegan. There's absolutely no heat. Piper's attracting Tegan. Natty's music hits. Tegan throws Chelsea off the top. Flip dive, shining wizard, pins her. Went like a minute. She beat the tag team champs. And then Natty celebrated with Tegan afterwards. So I think they actually will do the tag team title match. I would. They think. could. They could be doing that. Yeah. yeah. Not next week, though. Jey Uso promo. Bloodline took out Cody in the past, but he and Cody are good now. They're going to win the titles. So then we got this Drew promo. He says, you know, everybody wants to know what's up with me. I don't need to explain anything to anybody backstage. I only need to explain myself to the fans. And he says, you know, I am sick of interfering in fights I didn't start. I am sick of fighting at less than 100%. And so I have not been interfering in other people's business. And now people are upset with me because I'm not interfering in other people's business. He brings up Cody. He says, forgiveness when it comes to Jey Uso is not strength. It is weakness. And so Miz interrupts. And now this thing just gets totally bizarre because Miz is a heel but he's basically playing babyface to this guy who is a babyface who is going to be turning heel. And he says, you know, I I, uh, I don't appreciate what you did last week. And Drew tells him to shut up. And Miss says, I, I warned, or no, no Miss says, uh, you need to embrace who you are. He says, uh, uh, 
I don't even know this whole thing. The point is, Miz is, is uh, he's the getting yelled is, is at. The, he's getting told to shut up. They and Drew the wants to fight, and Miz says we're not dressed for a match. And he says that Drew is two-faced, not worth his time. Drew says it's time to fight. Miz says, my mom told me a bigger man walks away, so I'm going to walk away. And so he goes to walk away, but then he jumps Drew from behind. And so he go to commercial. And even though Miz said, we can't do this match because we're not dressed to wrestle, they are yeah. doing the match. And he's still not dressed to wrestle. He is in his suit. Yeah. Miz is wrestling in a suit. Mm-hmm. He is getting the heat on Drew McIntyre while wearing a suit. Mm-hmm. Drew finally fights back. He goes for the Claymore, but does a 3-2-1, but then he stops. He goes instead to get his sword. The referee confiscates this weapon, and so he then rams Miz's head into an exposed buckle, DDTs him, and pins him. Yeah. And then Drew cuts a promo, and he says, I'm not the same guy I was 30 seconds ago. I am sorry for my actions. And since I said I'm sorry, I'm automatically forgiven, and he leaves. The point being... He is now playing off this whole Jey Uso thing that, oh, man, Jey Uso was so bad for so long, but he apologized. Now everybody has forgiven him. So now apparently that's what he's going to do, which is a whole bunch of heelish things. And then afterwards he's going to say, I apologize, and now I'm forgiven. Appears to be the storyline here. Truck Williams promo on Raw. He introduces himself. Says he's going to defend the title tomorrow. Rhea and McDonough show up with Dom. With Dom. And Rhea says, Dom's not coming alone, and he's leaving with his title. They bring out Cody before the crowd. He cuts a two-minute promo, or last, maybe a minute. He says, I never plan on tagging with Jay, but Judgment Day has backed themselves into the corner, and uh, we're going to be at SmackDown, and we're going to win those titles at the pay-per-view. Thank you all, everybody! And he leaves. That was the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, main event was Gunther and Ciampa for the Intercontinental title. They this got, was actually a hell of a match. They got 20 minutes, and this was a great match by the end. Yeah, yeah, this was a hell of a match. They yeah. uh, they chopped the hell out of each other. Ciampa keeps trying to go for the Sicilian stretch. Finally, Gunther's just chopping the hell out of him, and he goes for a chop, and he hits the table. So Ciampa starts working over his hand, and uh, Gunther tries to do the big power bomb, but his hand and arm give out. So Ciampa hits a reverse DDT, running knee, puts him in the stretch. People are into this stretch. Gunther finally gets the ropes. They're going back and forth. Chop, 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 chop. Finally, Gunther grabs him, hits the double power bomb, puts him in the sleeper, and he's out. So then Imperium hits the ring. They're stomping on Ciampa. Gunther just heads to the back, cradling his bad hand. And then Johnny Gargano's music hits, sprints to the ring, and uh, he kind of runs wild, and then he goes to one corner, and Ciampa's in the other corner, and the guys are in the ring, and they point. They're going to do the big move. They went off the air. Mm-hmm. Timing issue. Mm-hmm. But uh, there you go. F- you know, it's good to see these guys back. DIY. Because they're a mm-hmm. great team, and uh, it'll give both of them something to do. And, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, Ciampa wasn't doing a lot, and, uh, man, Johnny Gargano's just not been anywhere, so. No, they haven't even they haven't even used him at all, just some, on some house shows. Yeah. So, at least they're back together, and uh, and that's that. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.